Hey, how's it guys? Alright, so in this video, we're going to create a data entry form using Python. To create the data entry form, I'll be using PyQt6, which is a pretty advanced GUI application development platform to build different types of desktop applications. Now, this is going to be a beginner-friendly lesson, and we're going to build a data entry form using Excel as the backend. So for example, right here, I have just an Excel template. Now my target table here is going to be from column B to column H. Column F is going to be a formula field. And let me update the formula. I'm going to say if star is not empty, then do the calculation. Basically, we're going to subtract and minus star. Otherwise, we're going to leave the field blank. Now, as I mentioned before, this is going to be my target table. And this is going to be the data entry form that we're going to build from scratch. I know Excel has a built-in user form uh, platform or uh, interface. But when it comes to functionalities and integrating your GUI application with third-party APIs, Python is a, a much better option in this case. So for the project, I'm going to name the project Wash Dishes. And then I can click on this checkbox to see if I want this task to require additional attention. I'm going to leave the checkbox check. Then we have a drop down field to choose the individual. Then we can choose the status and followed by the uh, calendar widget. Now with PyQt6, there are a lot more widgets that you can use to make your desktop application more functional or even uh, to perform even more things, basically. But since I'm only showing you the basic functionalities, so here I'm going to uh, choose. Here, let's do this. So I'm going to choose March 12th. And for the end date, I'm going to choose a date that is earlier than March 12th. And let's do February 1st. Now, because start dates cannot be greater than end dates, so we have a validation to check if the date range is valid. Otherwise, we can use the status bar to display the end message. And once everything is populated, I can click on Submit to add the entry. And Risa is going to uh, put everything back into their default settings. And that should be everything for the demo. Let me close this Excel file. Oh, I should uh, close the app. And closing the app will automatically close the Excel file. All right, so here let's uh, first of all install the Python package. Now to build this application, there are two libraries that we need to use. One is the PyQt6 Python package. And to managing Excel file or Excel application, I'll be using this uh, Python library called PyWin32. And unfortunately, PyWin32 is a Windows only Python library. If I'm using Linux or um, Mac OS, I will probably recommend use Pandas or Excel Writer. All right, so here, let's go ahead and install the libraries. Next, we're going to create the app.py file. Oh, I have a typo, it should be touch app.py. Now let's open the file. I'm going to copy my Windows icon. So this is going to be the icon that I'm going to use. So let me put the, the uh, code editor on the left. All right, so here we're going to import the libraries first. And to build this data entry application, these are all the libraries that we'll be using. So from PyQt6, these are all the widgets. And to manage timestamps, from Qt Core, I'm going to import QDate 
and QTs for other uh, core functionalities in the development. And to embed the uh, icon from Qt GUI, I'm going to import QIcon class. And these two Python libraries are going to be used to keep the process running, as well as to locate the Excel data entry file. And to manipulate the Excel file from win32count.client, we're going to name the package as win32. And to populate the combo boxes list. I created two lists and I store the lists in this uh, raft.py file. You can also use a JSON file or you can uh, link your application to a database. Now here, let's go ahead and create the base window. I'm going to name the class as app window. And from the app window class, I'm going to pass Q widget as the base class. So Q widget is basically a blank window. Now here I'm setting the window size to 700 by 500. Then I'm going to uh, populate the window's title. And that's basically the title showing on the top of the um, title bar. Then I'm going to insert the apps icon using set window icon method. So one of the things we can make our application look pretty is by using CSS style sheets. Now here I'm simply just going to set the font size to 14 pixel. And the reason why here I need to specify the class type is that. So by defining the class type, in this case, our base class is going to be Q widget. Now any widgets that is going to be treated as child widget under the base class, will also inherit the uh, CSS style sheet property. And let me turn up the auto completion. All right, so let's go ahead and create the entry point. I'm going to say, if this is the main file, then I want to open the Excel template. So here I'm defining the file path. And I want to create a flag to indicate that whether if the Excel file is open. Just in case, uh, somehow, if you mistype the file name, I want to be able to address the issue when I launch the application. Then I'm going to check if the uh, Excel file exists. And with this, I'm going to set the flag to two. Then we can construct an instance of Excel application using win32.dispatch. And I'll name the object as Excel app. Then I'm going to set the application visibility to two. Then open the Excel workbook. Then we're going to create an entity to link to the target worksheet. Now let's give it a try. So if I run the script, and it's going to uh, display the Excel file. Now we can move on to opening the uh, desktop application or data entry form basically. But first we need to create an instance of Q application. And we can pass the arguments if there's any argument. But usually people use system arguments, this method here. But in this case, we're not actually providing any uh, arguments. So this is going to return as an empty list. You can also replace this with an empty list. Now in PyQt, there are a couple of default styles. And here me increase the zoom. And it should be on the fusion. So there are four different default styles that I can use. So fusion is going to be the one that I'm going to use. And fusion is going to be uh, more toward the modern uh, style. You'll see in a second. And I have not used Marcos. So you can play around with these four styles. And let me take this out. And to display the user form, we need to create an instance of the app window object. Then we can use the dash show method to display the window. The Q application instance is going to be your event loop to keep the process running in the background. And once we uh, terminate the window or close the window, we need to terminate the session. And after we terminate the session, 
it's going to automatically run into this uh, system ex uh, exception. Now in here, I want to save the Excel file, then close the Excel file. Now let's go in the launch, yeah, launch the window. If I close the form, and that's going to close the Excel file altogether. Now to organize the widgets, we have different layouts that we can use. And for this one, I'm going to use the Q form layout. Now throughout the tutorial, I'll create different layouts to organize my widgets. And to apply the layout to our uh, base class, we need to use the set layout method followed by the layout that we want to use as the base. Now let's go ahead and create the widgets. So here I'm going to create a method called init UI. And I'll create my data entry field in the combo box first. And this one more combo box I forgot to create. So this one's going to be the task name. Here let me open my backup Excel template. And I'll put the Excel file on the right. So the task name field is going to be task name. Then I want to insert a placeholder text, enter task name. Then I'm going to set the data entry field, which is a text box. Then I'm going to set the data entry field, which is a text box. I'm going to set the width to 400, fixed width. Then I'm going to create my combo boxes, one for the assigned to field, and the other one is going to be status. And to add the drop down list, we can insert the array. In this case, will be here. Let me open the file again. In this case, I'm going to be using this employees list that contains a list of names. Then we can add the list using add items. And same thing for status. Except that for status, I want to set the uh, default to the second item from the list. And here we can use second index method. All right, so let's uh, insert the calendar widgets. Now here we have two uh, calendar widgets. One is going to be the start date, and the other one is going to be the end date. So I'm going to display the gray lines for both widgets. Then I'm going to apply the CSS style sheets to set the selection back on. So let me go ahead, actually, uh, I forgot. So let me code the inner UI method. And because I haven't added these widgets to my layout yet, let me do that right now. So I'll put a widgets insertion to the main layout object. Now, when you are using Q form layout, you need to use the add row method to uh, insert each item individually. Oh, and I haven't created the checkbox yet. All right, so if we look at the calendar widget, so the set style sheet method here is what the CSS property is doing is basically set the selection background to red and the uh, font color to white. And for the end date, I want to set the default selection to be 14 days from today's date. So here we can use qdate.currentdate.addDates and we're going to add 14 days from today's date. Next, we're going to insert the checkbox, and this one's pretty easy. So simply reference the Q checkbox widget, then we insert the label. I can put this back. All right, so by now we're, we're almost done with creating the interface. Let me just do a quick comparison. Now, a couple of things we'll need. 
one is the push buttons and the other one is going to be the status bar. Now to manage the buttons, I'll create a separate layout and I'll name the layout as buttons. And here I'm using Q horizontal box layout. That means when I insert widget to this uh, layout manager here, the widgets is going to be placed horizontally. Then I'll create my submit and reset push buttons. And I haven't created the methods to connect to the signal yet. Now here I want to show you two ways you can connect a method to the trigger signal. You can assign a method to a trigger when you create the widgets, or you can reference the widget followed by the signal name that connects, then insert the function or method that you want to execute when the signal is fired. And for the submit button, I'm going to set the fixed width to 120. And for the reset button, I want the button to be a little bit smaller. I'll set the width to 80. And the CSS property is going to set the font color to red. All right, so let me put a bookmark right here. And I'll create the reset method first. So here, basically what I'm doing is I'm basically clear the uh, text or I'm resetting the drop down. And these two are the calendar widgets. And this one's going to be the check box. Now to go back to the calendar widget. Now, when a user is selecting a date, we want to make sure that the users cannot select a date where the end date is earlier than the start date. And to implement the validation, so here we can reference the end calendar widget. Then we can use the selection change signal. So this signal is going to fire or trigger whenever you select a date from the widget itself. Then we want to code this method here, check date selection, to perform the validation. So here let's uh, insert the check date selection method. And if we look at the code here, so basically, we're going to compare the start date's calendar and the end date's calendar. And if the dates from the start date calendar is greater than the end date's calendar, then we're going to display a message using the status bar, start dates cannot be after end date. Then we're going to merely set the end date's calendar to 14 days from today. Now let's insert the buttons. All right, so here let me come out this line here. I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to add both buttons to the buttons layout. Now with the Q form layout, here, let's do this first. I'll insert empty label first. Then I'm going to insert the button layout. Actually, buttons layout. Now, if I try to do that, it's going to put the buttons on the left side of the column and to push the buttons alignment to the right. We can use the add stretch to um, move the widgets all the way to the right. So basically, the add stretch method is going to remove all the empty spaces until the widgets in the layout is reached to the end of the area. In this case, we'll be right here. And the last widget is going to be the status bar. And that will be right here. And the status bar is going to be in the first column. Oh, I have a typo. This should be status bar. And that means I need to fix the typo here as well. Okay, so right now we are officially done with the interface.
So this is everything we have. And the last step is to create the add entry method to populate a new entry in the Excel file. And I'll put the add entry method here. Now, if I'm coming from writing VBA before, then you will probably recognize that this is VBA syntax. So this line here is going to return the last row based on column B. In VBA, the index is one base. Column A will be index of one, column B will be index of two. So I'm locating the last row number based on column B. Then let me open the Excel spreadsheet. Oh, actually not Excel spreadsheet, the data entry form. All right, so let me test out the validation. So I'm going to select February 6. And here's our air message. Then it's going to put the end dates two weeks from today. Now, there are other validations that you can implement, such as to check if the entry field is empty or not. But for now, I'm pretty sure you guys can handle those on your own. Now, to test out the entry functionality. And here's the Excel template. Actually, let's put that right here. So all these methods here, actually not method, all these attributes here, this statement here is going to reference the last cell, plus one. So plus one row, now plus one, plus one row. Right now, my last row number is row three. So the last row variable is going to return three. And we need to add the entry to row four. So that's why we need to add one to the last row variable followed by each individual count, B, C, D, E, and we need to skip F, and this will be G. And you can also manually type the letter as well to uh, from the index number to the column letter. Then it's going to return the entry uh, value, the test name entry value. And this one's going to be the checkbox, which is the uh, last column. Then we have combo widgets, which are these two objects, followed by the calendar widgets. And when you run the selected dates method, it's going to return the value as a queue dates object. And we need to convert the object as a string. So we need to uh, run the to string method and provide the date format. And after I add the entry, I want to show the message entry is added. Then reset all the fields. All right, so if I go in the, let's do again, dishwashers. Actually, uh, let's put this on the top. And let's do wash dishes. And I'll check the checkbox. And I'll choose my name, JJ. And for the status, I'll choose late. And for the calendar, I'll choose March 21st, all the way to April 11, and submit. And I'll add the entry to the Excel spreadsheet. Now if I close the form, and that's going to save the file. So if I merely open the file, And you should see the latest entry in the Excel spreadsheet. So this concludes this tutorial, and hope you guys find this video useful. And feel free to uh, post your question or your feedback in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.